Yes, my people. Come and see the way this guy proved that Peter Obi actually won the election in River State. Come and see because. When Peter Obi was saying that he is supposed to get more than 50%, even in his petition, he wrote it that he's supposed to get more than 50% from River State. Now, look at somebody that has gone to dig out the truth and proved it that truly he won the election. See the actual vote that Peter Obi was supposed to get from River State before the evil governor there twisted the result on behalf of Tinubu. Come and see the actual result that was supposed to come from River State before these people, these criminal minded people that call themselves leaders, twisted the result in their favor. Look at the, the vote, look at the result. So help me to pass the message across so that people will know what the truth is because if they think that we are going to back down from this struggle, we we'll never just watch, just look at just look at what the rubbish they are doing. He and the Labour Party seriously underestimated the votes that they got in River State during the presidential election. They also overestimated the votes that APC and Bola Tinubu got in Rivers in the same election. If you look at the petition that they submitted at the presidential election petitions tribunal, you will see that the Labour Party votes are higher while that of the APC is lower. You can see the results declared by INEC. No one knows how they arrived at the figures because it's quite different from what's uploaded on IREF. Of course, that's not counting the polling units that their results are non-existent on the IREF, plus places where elections didn't hold. Now, take a look at the sum of the results from the INEC IREF. Credit to Stanley and other Nigerians who took the time to collect the results uploaded on the IREF. Also, many thanks to all those who have joined our membership recently. Thank you all for the massive support, it is well appreciated. As you can see, the results are quite different from what INEC announced. This result is also in line with what the Yaga Africa said after the election. According to them, Labour Party got about 51% of the votes from the polling units they monitored during the election. It's not far from the 54% they got after the collation by citizens, as you can see here. Also, P2B said that they got more than 50% in one of his interviews. This is impunity taken too far. Even if INEC really had a network or hacking problem like they claimed that made it impossible to upload the presidential election results, why didn't the INEC chairman wait to confirm the results from the IREF before the declaration of the winner? You can see the set of things on the IREF as classified in this graph. The first bar is the number of polling unit results that are okay and readable, followed by the ones that are not uploaded. Also, blurry results sheets, wrong uploads, a situation where they upload entirely different things like someone's image or a result from another state, just in that order. Judging by the results, APC and PDP didn't get the required 25% in River State. And worryingly, there are still over a thousand polling unit results from River State still yet to be uploaded to the IREF. Is that even legal? To upload results several days after the election was conducted? Since the INEC chairman is aware of how the beavers works, why didn't he wait for offline uploads to come online so as to verify the results before the declaration? INEC designed the beavers to work online and offline. Say for instance, there is a connection problem that is preventing the instant upload of election results after counting has finished at the polling unit. The polling officers are trained to use the offline upload option, which is essentially capturing all the data with the beavers machine and immediately the connection to the IREV is restored, it will upload the results automatically. Think of it like an upload you want to do on any social media site like Facebook, YouTube or Twitter. You've loaded your image or video and all of a sudden you lose connection or you run out of data. Immediately the connection is restored, your upload will automatically restart and complete all by itself without your input. If the INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu is aware of this and he still went ahead and announced a winner without waiting for the offline uploads to come online, that means he willfully participated and enabled a premeditated rigging planned before the election. By blocking uploads of presidential election results while the National Assembly election results wasn't blocked, it enabled politicians to manipulate and manufacture the results, which he hurriedly declared while some political parties protested the non-adherence to the electoral law. The collation of the River State presidential election results by patriotic citizens is just a tip of the iceberg of what happened in other states of the Federation during the presidential election. Remember that the results are not even complete yet, many strongholds of the Labour Party are not yet uploaded to the IREF, which can only mean that their votes will increase when the missing results are added. So what it means is that the Labour Party intentionally tendered a conservative figure in their petition. These are filed under oath, so it's better to underestimate their votes instead of quoting figures that they can't defend. That will give their opponents room for argument. 
the Labour Party was not fully prepared for the tsunami of votes that came their way in the presidential election. They didn't have representation in many polling units, which led to concerned Labour Party voters acting as agents. Of course, it didn't work out in many instances, many were chased away, some were only able to snap the results. At the end of the day, not all the polling unit results made their way to the Labour Party situation room. This happened in their strongholds too. Of course, intimidation was also widespread during the election. Thugs worked in partnership with the police, especially in River State and Lagos. Government invaded the polling booths. But the problem is that there's no consequence management in Nigeria. If there was consequence management, three, four governors in jail would prevent the next set of governors from doing what this was doing. But if we don't insist now, the next election will be worse. That's this is why we will take the names of these public officials and not go to the government. Thank God the Americans are asking us to bring their names. Thank God the British are saying they want those names to go out. Just like Professor Pat Tommy said in the Big Ten press conference, they are compiling names of people who undermine democracy at the U.S. request. Yes, the world saw what happened. That's a tweet by the U.S. mission in Nigeria. Maybe that's why Biden hasn't congratulated Tinubu. It was a coup against the people of Nigeria. Anyway, you can reach out to Pat Otome and Co. on Twitter for suggestions on people who will be added to the list for possible sanctions. Chief on the list should be this guy who has his family in the United States where things work, where he can't racially profile anyone without consequence, but in Nigeria he threatens an entire tribe, sends his thugs to maim and disenfranchise people on election day. Till this day, no security agency has questioned him for the hate he spread during the election. Instead, the DSS are busy looking for people like this lady who shared this video of ballot papers allegedly destroyed by thugs working for the governor of Edo State. What in the world is going on with our country? These people stole a lot of votes from Labour Party. What it shows is that P2B is not desperate. He has said it many times that the process by which one gets to power determines what will happen thereafter. You don't expect someone who bribed his way with millions of dollars to get to power to do something in the interest of the country without first of all recovering his investment. There are politicians who will take advantage of the situation if they were in pit of issues. They know the masses back them. They can cause a lot of harm to the country with massive protests because the mandate was stolen. No, not P2B. He called for calm and reiterated that he trusts the courts to do the right thing. Another individual that should make the sanctions list is Governor Wiki of River State. He took election rigging and intimidation to another level, all in his quest to be in the good books of Bola Tinubu and take his revenge on Atiku Ababaka. His role in the rigging of the election in River State is the main reason citizens did this collation to see the true votes that were cast in River State. After now, we can go to talk like like frog, way way to allow this thing. You know what I'm now some people go just come out, come out like this just because of their own selfish interest. They they will choose to they will prefer to plunge the entire country into what you know. No. Reverse state all this all along for every election that they get one point something million votes, one point something million votes. How many million votes they get this month this year? How many thousand votes they get this year? Just because of rigging, 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 everything, the same franchising people. See, see the votes they come from reverse state. They, they even shameful to the Sian. Reverse state of all states. They struggle, they struggle to even get 500,000 votes in total. Just because one person, they, 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 una, una just disenfranchise people from participating in the process. It don't make sense. I don't know the kind of environment where this, our politicians won't create for us. I don't know whether they, they, they happy to the sister this country, no, 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 they work. How we go choose, how we go come out at our age as a nation, prefer to disenfranchise people from participating in the process. When other countries, they, they try, they encourage their people to participate. India is one point something billion people in population. But 800 million people, they participate in the election. 800 million. 800 million. We, we are 200 and something million people. Out of the 90-something, uh, 9, 9, 9, 93 million people that collected PVC, only 20 million people participated, participated in, the, in the election. It's supposed to say, you know, they're you know they shameful to the year. You know, they're shameful to the year. Say, let's say that 10% of the population, now they, they come out for the process. 10% of Nigerian population, when India, they get over 90, they get over 90, 80%. Of people participating in their process, but our own 10 percent, 10 percent. It is shameful because now, now these things, now, now these people now in the drum, they know why people will participate. You, you, you come out, they scare people from coming out to participate in the process. Eh? 
For what? Students, when they, when they close their school, they go, when they dance so that they feel participate in the election, they did they, they, they more than 10 million people. How many of them now participate? Total vote, total, everybody will vote on that for the election at 20 something million people, which is just like 10% of the population of the country. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Our leaders should begin to encourage good. I don't even know. In short, I don't even talk again.